How do hackers compromise servers? How do they go from boot to root? Today, we're gonna test our own boot to root skills. We're gonna exploit some CVEs, remote code execution, PHP injection. We're gonna escalate our privileges and get root access on a remote server. We are gonna capture the flag from this room called Publisher on Try Hack Me. This is a free room. We've got two flags, a user flag and a root flag, and we've got our target IP. First thing I'm gonna do is hop into Kali Linux and let's run an mmap scan and enumerate the server and see what's running. And boom, there we go. We've got SSH open on port 22 and we've got a web server running on port 80. And here we go. Let's see what's on this web server. Published articles, stories, and opinions about SPIP. Looks like some of this is in French. None of these links really work. We just look up what is SPIP, a system for publishing content on the internet. First thing I'm gonna do is do some directory fuzzing because if we remember the prompt, that was one of the first things they mentioned. So I'm going to use a tool called Ferox Buster. It allows us to do some directory fuzzing and I'll give it a word list with common possible directories. So if there's any other pages, Ferox Buster is going to find them. And here we go. We see we already got images so we can literally go here in the browser. Looks like a bunch of general images just used on the website. Nothing special. And here's another directory, spip. So if we go there and Instead, now we've got something else. So we found a new directory. Let's take a look and see if any of these links work. And they do. Here's an article. If we look at these links, we've got a page plan. We've got an RSS backend link, a contact. And here we find our first interesting page. And it looks like we found a login page. And if we look at the end of this, lang equals fr. If we change that to us, there we go. It'll give us the English version so we can finally read something. So maybe we can use something like Hydra. Um, we can try and brute force this or we could guess, hey, maybe it's think we saw that user and his password's password. Probably not. We need to find a vulnerability. So we've got a web server. We've got to find a vulnerability, specifically one for remote code execution. But if we do some reconnaissance, if we just look on the web, maybe SPIP and just look up CVE. And now we may have found something. SPIP, a certain version, we got remote code execution. And we've got a proof of concept that exploits PHP code injection in SPIP. We could pull this Python script, but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hop into Metasploit and let's see if there's a module for this. And here we go, we've got a Unix web app SPIP RCE form. Let's select that module. With all the required options set, we can run the exploit and boom, we get SPIP, a version identified as 4.2.0, which appears to be vulnerable. Metasploit is going to attempt to exploit this and it looks like it was able to start a Meterpreter session. And now we've got a shell on the web server exploiting that CVE. Looks like we've landed in that author's directory. And now that we've got our shell, we can look around, investigate some files. We see a file user.txt and that is our first flag. Go into their home directory, there's an interesting folder .ssh and it looks like we've just found the SSH keys for this user think. This is the private key for think. What I'm gonna do is copy this out. Let's open a new tab. And from here, using the think users account and their SSH key, we should be able to SSH directly into that web server. And now we are connected via SSH as think to the publisher web server. And it looks like our account, our shell has some type of interesting security permissioning because it looks like we can't create files and we can't read files even when we have explicit access. What I'm going to do next is load in this tool for privilege escalation on Linux called LinPs. And this will automatically scan our system and look for any possible paths of privilege escalation. We've got a writable folder dev shm. And if we look under protections, this is an interesting section because we had a weird shell issue earlier and the prompt tells us that we have restricted access to the system by some security profile. It looks like app armor is enabled, which is a security module in Linux that informs forces privileges and permissions uh, by application. It looks like the profile is user sbin ash, which looks like it's a low budget, different version of a show with some basic features. First, we can take a look and see that app armor is enabled. And if we go try and look, what actually is the app armor profile? And now we can clearly see the reason why we were having issues with files, issues writing. We've got explicitly denied access to write and read to various different folders. And it looks 
looks like this is just for the ASH shell. So as long as we are in this ASH shell, this app armor profile is going to apply to us and we're not going to be able to write and read certain directories. But Limpies earlier told us that we have write permissions to this directory here. What we could do is create our own shell script and in the script, just tell it open a bash shell with inherited privileges. And now, as you can see, we are no longer in ASH. Our shell type is bash so that security app armor profile is no longer going to apply to us. And remember back to earlier when we were trying to find an avenue for privilege escalation on this Linux server, Linpeace told us that there was an interesting binary with the SUID set. And when a binary file owned by the root user has the SUID bit set, it means that when that binary gets executed, it runs with the privileges of the root user rather than the privilege of the user who ran it. Using this command, we can identify all of the binaries on the system owned by root that have the SUID bit set. And this unique binary here was identified as interesting and unknown to Linpeace. And because this is a binary, we can't just open it up and read it normally, but we can use the strings command. And this will pull and print out all the human readable strings from that binary. And if we look really closely at this binary, it creates a bash shell and then calls another script that we haven't seen before. This run container.sh script gets ran under bash. So when this binary is ran, it's going to create a bash shell and then call this script run container.sh. Run container sh is a custom script to manage Docker containers. But looking at the permissions, they're wide open. We have read, write, and execute. And with write access, we can go in here and modify the script. I'll call bash, open a shell with inherited privileges. So we've identified a custom binary owned by the root user with the SUID bit set. So anytime this binary is ran, it's ran with the privileges of the root user instead of me, the user that ran it. And examining the strings, it looks like that binary calls a shell script that we have write access to and have modified to create a bash shell with inherited privileges, which means now that when we run that original binary owned by the root user, we get nothing because we forgot a slash. Like I said, when we run that binary, boom, there it is. Our new bash shell that we inserted into that code. And if we do, who am I? We can see we have root privileges now. So we've escalated our privileges. Now we have root access on this remote web server. And again, if we look around, go to the root folder in the root directory, we have finally gotten the root flag for our publisher CTF. I learned a lot. This was kind of challenging for me because I'm new to CTFs, but these are a great, even free way to learn and get hands-on technical experience with cybersecurity tools and concepts. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out some of my other content and leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see next.